breakaway civilizations and space pirates. Hello, welcome to my channel. I hope you are all happy and well. My name is Marie Swaru. It is widely said that everything in space is in the fifth density, although some authors say it is the fourth density, doesn't matter, the hard truth is that you can never live in a density, you can only experience who you are, through the mirror of the apparently external reality you experience. You are your own density, each person, each being with a consciousness and self-awareness has its own unique range of perceptions, their unique reality. Therefore, what you find while traveling in space is nothing other than your reflection, again, but manifested in a faster way as I explained in my previous video, how densities work in space. As defined in a few words, a dimension is the result of having higher awareness, and that higher awareness is the result of a more evolved consciousness, which in turn defines what a density is. In this case, a dimension is described as the individual's capacity to understand the same things and events from multiple angles, from many simultaneous points of view all at once, and how they relate to each other and interconnect. An example of this, is how a highly aware individual on Earth can understand the average person's point of view, and why they react as they do, to one or another specific event and how it is officially described in the media, and at the same time truly understand and be aware of the true nature and reasons behind such event, using his or her higher knowledge. Which in turn brings higher awareness, and this higher awareness collapses the official version of that event, including the public's average opinion, in the enlightened individual's mind, as he or she simply has a lot more context and data to understand such event. Therefore, this highly aware individual is aware of more dimensions surrounding the event used as an example here. But, what does all this have to do with breakaway civilizations and space pirates? The reason I had to make the immediate previous video, and why I mention all this is because I must make it very clear that whatever happens in space may be valid for one individual or group of individuals but not for another, because whatever each person perceives as their reality will only be the result of their own mirror, of who they are. On Earth, inside the contained dominant frequency of the planet, good and bad people may perceive, or be able to witness the same event, a tragedy for example. And even when the way high frequency or low frequency people interpret that tragic event will always differ, as I explained above with dimensions and higher awareness, they both will still be aware of the same event, and in part, that is why bad things can happen to good people, because their vibration is kept in a frequency that is kept within a similar range with everyone else's, within an average, because of the dominant frequency of the planet. In space, whoever you are is manifested into your reality as your mirror, faster and in a freeway, as you are outside the planet's dominant frequency. This means that you can literally be in the exact same place as where a tragedy is in progress, and not see it, simply because you are literally in another dimension. This is why planet Venus is seen by Earth science as a corroborated acid-filled hot hell hole, but while in space and from a higher point of understanding, from another dimension, it is a tropical paradise super inhabitable planet. And I'm well aware that all this I am telling you is well above the limited unidimensional thinking of Earth science. A starship from a positive and loving, high vibration civilization may travel through one or another pirate filled dangerous place in space, multiple times, and never see them, never encounter them, while another starship with a lower vibration crew may have constant problems and quarrels with them. 
It all depends on their vibe, and this applies on any planet including Earth, but in space even more so. As I said before, in space, you manifest who you are almost immediately, as it all depends on you, as the collective unconscious there is almost non-existent, or at least weak, but I must mention that there is a larger collective unconscious that transcends all the distances in space, and unites the perception and the thought patterns of each species. And this is why a chair is a chair and it is something to sit on, for any civilization of the human Lyrian genetic family, bluntly said, they all have asses, therefore they need chairs to sit them on. It is highly irresponsible and simplistic to catalogue species and races into good ones and bad ones, only because of their genetic lineage. For example, considering Pleiadians to be good, and reptiles to be bad. Although for any human Lyrian, a man-eating space reptile will always be an example of an evil creature and race, from another point of view they may not be evil, as good and bad are only relative to the interests of the observer. There are good reptiles in space, as there are bad Pleiadians, although as always we must observe the parameters used to decide why they are so. In the end, and as always, it all boils down to the actions of each person, whatever race he, she, or it, may belong to. But generalizing, we can still say that most space reptiles are bad for us human Lyrians, because they tend to eat us, and Pleiadians are good people who live in service to others and are great spiritual teachers. Every civilization has its problems and they all have problematic people in them, who many times will choose to run away from justice. Space is big, needless to say, and finding a small group of problematic people many times is no easy task, even for the Federation itself. Criminals of all civilizations with access to a starship have the tendency to fly out there and find some planet, or some rock in space and build their base there, and from where they may conduct pillage and robberies to nearby civilizations and unaware starships who are passing by. It may be a simple rudimentary space settlement made with the items those people have scavenged or stole from others, or in time they can become an independent colony which can even evolve into another civilization. All individuals in a holistic society have access to all the resources and all the information of the civilization they were born in and their high ethics and spirituality keep all the members in service to others as they fulfill their necessary service to self. In other words, what they want and what they need as individuals are also nurturing and giving their society all that it requires in a near-perfect symbiosis and cooperation. In such a society all the needs and wants of the individuals are met, Therefore the mentality of lack is almost non-existent there. The problem with this is when an individual or group of individuals go rogue, perhaps with other interests and ethical spiritual ideas that no longer go with the society they came out from. Although all their needs are met, living in comfortable luxury and with all survival needs solved, Sometimes individuals may become corrupt wanting mainly one thing, power. When an individual or group start plotting against a holistic society intending to take over it, that same society will react to such individuals by treating them as an infection, and as the dominant frequency of those places is so high, and their inhabitants are highly aware, therefore nearly impossible to manipulate, Almost always, if not always, those corrupt individuals will become outcasts, and having had all the resources of their mother society at their reach they may have access to high technology, including starships. 
When such individuals go against the harmony of a civilization they may be hunted down before they cause more trouble to the peaceful inhabitants, so many times, more often than not, they choose to run in their starships. Their vibration is no longer synchronized with the one of their mother civilization. People who think alike tend to gather, especially around a charismatic leader who has brainwashed them into following him or her, even if that leader may be as mad as a bag of bees. As they know they are outlaws they have the common tendency to find a faraway planet, planetoid or an asteroid, and tunnel it, making underground bases and cities in its interior. The way they do this is by using high-temperature tunneling equipment and machines. These bore into the surface of a planet melting the rock with extremely high temperatures, using the same melted rock as a surface cover leaving the walls of the newly created place as smooth as glass, and they can tunnel over a mile in only a day. This equipment is usually fed by Cerro Point reactors, although similar ones are found on Earth which use nuclear power, and are commonly used by the Cabal to make their underground cities and the tunnels that connect them all. Another very common practice among space pirates is to find an asteroid with suitable characteristics, which are to be very solid in composition, mainly metallic in nature, usually having a large amount of iron in it. Such an asteroid must be of the correct size and acceptable enough in general shape, and once they have found it, they bore into its interior with the high temperature drill, hollowing it out. Then they install engines at the rear, and a control bridge on the front, and all they need in the interior to transform it into a rock-shaped starship. This practice is very common even among civilizations that are not dedicated to piracy, as it is an easy and fast way to build a large starship as the asteroid becomes the outer hull of such a craft, so all they need to do is hollow it out and install equipment in its interior. For space pirates asteroid spacecraft have another important advantage, it becomes perfect camouflage as it can easily pass off as a simple rock floating in space, although advanced civilizations have developed advanced enough sensors to detect them. All this besides the tendency of nearly everyone, to tunneling underground for protection or for whatever reason, settling underground, as this is widely used all over the galaxy. Those breakaway dangerous civilizations can only find their necessary resources by pillaging other planets and civilizations, especially those which are at a lesser evolved technological level, or even in pre-industrial stages. Many times these evolving civilizations some of which have barely started to become interstellar, will ask to become members of the Galactic Federation precisely to get their needed protection from these regressive breakaway pirate micro-civilizations. But in certain high-traffic areas in Federation-controlled space, like here around Earth, they are nearly non-existent as the Federation itself is quite able to neutralize or capture them, so they are in no way something to worry about for the inhabitants of Earth. Life in space can become a real circus, and those space pirates may be of just about any race, although the most common ones are reptiles, insectoids, and lyrians. They have all been accused of not only pillaging and illegally extracting ore, and other materials from countless planets with lawful owners, but also of human trafficking as slaves and food for reptiles but this problem extends to other non-human Lyrian races who are also exploited and trafficked as well. But as I explained above, it all depends on the vibration of each person and with what it is a match to, especially when in space as densities and dimensions there are quite well defined, unlike on Earth or on any other specific planet. 
And what defines them so well is consciousness awareness, as is to be expected. There is much more to say about breakaway civilizations and space pirates, so there will be a second part on this subject soon. Thank you for watching my video, and for liking and subscribing, I appreciate it a lot. And I hope to see you here next time. Take care and be very well. With much love, your friend. Marie Swaru.